the highest honor awarded to an engineering graduate is given to our valedictorian, the student with the highest grade point average. The ILLIG Prize is awarded by the faculty to Andrew Yang for commendable proficiency in their studies. Let's, let's applaud. Come on over here and we'll do that. So a double major, a double major in physics and applied math, Andrew is also the recipient of this year's Applied Physics Faculty Award. His interest lies in the intersection between physics, mathematics, and computation. His research direction has swung wildly from designing uh, long short-term memory uh, neural networks to searching for periodic signature structures with Zhuanan Li, Chu Assistant Professor of, Bio of Applied Mathematics. The majority of his work has been with Simon Billinge, Professor of Material Science and Professor of Applied Physics and Applied Math on designing fast techniques and programs to probe changes in material structure from high throughput to fraction data. We're still going. <laughs> he and Village have taken these techniques to beam lines in three countries, uh, three continents. Andrew enjoys, same thing, Andrew enjoys discussing his work uh, and was the first undergraduate to speak at a Bruker AXS MIT Symposium. He'll continue his exploration of material structures and behaviors through neutron diffraction and machine learning of interatomic potentials at Caltech. Please help me congratulate and welcome to the podium for remarks this year's recipient of the Illig Prize and valedictorian of the class of 2025, Andrew Yang. So, thank you, Dean Morrison. Every good ceremony places its best speeches at the beginning and at the end, which is why I'm speaking in the middle of class day. <laughs> and to be honest, that's fair. When I look at this crowd, I see students pioneering clean energy, ridding plastic from our oceans. We have a real-life Stark Labs, featured recently in a Veritasium video. Students using machine learning to explore the quantum world and working with NASA to launch a freaking satellite into space. Despite all of these amazing people who could be up here today, they choose the dork with the Among Us keychain that you've probably never seen outside of class. <laughs> uh, for those of you who've had me as a TA, though, watching me yap up here probably isn't strange. Uh, you know I love lecturing and could very well spend the next 45 minutes glazing Euclidean distance matrices. But the best part about teaching here at Columbia is seeing how we all interact so differently with the same material. And I think this is representative of Columbia as a whole. Now, don't fact check me, but not only does our class represent all 50 states, we represent almost half the countries. We come from the biggest cities to the smallest towns, and a fifth of us are the first in our families to even attend, let alone graduate, university. Yeah. Very impressive. Yet together, as one class, we struggled through introductory physics, bared through the insane heat waves in our dorms, pulled all-nighters to finish our Art of Engineering projects, and spent hours in Butler figuring out how to add just one more page to our Music Hum essays. <laughs> all right. So I want to share a bit about my background and how it shaped my perspective here. Now, I know we're all excited to graduate and finally be free of classes, but unfortunately, I'm going to put you through one last lecture. All right. So my research is all about how materials look on the nanoscale. So current microscopes aren't powerful enough to see the individual atom, so we have to be a little more creative, and we shine lasers on them. So it's kind of like when you shine a laser on a mirror, and the direction the laser bounces tells you the angle the mirror is oriented. But no real-world mirror is perfectly smooth. So if you turn off the lights and use a strong enough laser, you can see not only a bright dot where the reflected light lands, but also small fluctuations in light. These minute ripples tell us what atoms compose our mirror and where the defects are, the tiniest waves are the most important. Waving hi in orientation week to some of now, your now closest friends. Tearful waves goodbye to your family after convocation, who have hopefully rejoined you on this day. Shout out to my mom, dad, my yeah, my nai nai, and my sister Annie, who's just starting high school. <laughs> yeah. No pressure. All right. Oh, sound waves of applause at our amazing performers and learner, from waving flags to wavy tides at the free kayaking sessions downtown. We make these waves every day, 
from the interactions and time we spend with each other. In 1807, Joseph Fourier showed how waves can combine to form beautiful functions. Our interactions combine to form this beautiful community. When you think back at the time you spent here, what's going to stick with you? Well, sure, the horrors of a machine learning midterm are probably never going to leave you, but I'm certain it's also filled with un, like, unplanned urban explorations, watching sunsets on the Brooklyn Bridge, losing four buy-ins and five hands of hold'em, and making an Among Us shaped candle for white elephant. <laughs> All of these with friends by your side. <laughs> While we have some of the most rigorous courses, access to lucrative internships, and the best research laboratories, what really makes us us is our commitment to each other. After all, our slogan is not just engineering, but engineering for humanity. And Columbia engineers, engineers, are particularly well versed in the humanities. So I'm going to Caltech for my PhD. Shout out to Brent's lab, who are hopefully on live right now. Yeah. <laughs> And when I went to visit LA, I got lost late at night looking for Union Station. And I asked a stranger at the bus stop for directions and ended up sitting next to him on the bus. We chatted a bit before our conversation turned to syllogisms and the Nicomachean ethics. And he was impressed that Columbia taught us so well about Aristotle that he offered to take me out for dinner. And while、well, sure I could have ended up without my kidneys in an ice bath, <laughs> it turns out he was a former sociology professor, and we engaged in one of my most exciting debates about what it means to belong somewhere. All because I went, "Screw it, I'm in." Which brings me to my final point: the importance of taking risks, of splashing through the ripples of uncertainty. While this mindset has led to unpleasant situations, like being detained in Japan during midterms week and googling symptoms of beaver fever after drinking water from a creek, like hear me out, I wanted to try the cold spring up at Cold Springs. So like, yeah, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> But taking these risks has also allowed me to explore amazing physics across the Pacific Ocean, become the first undergraduate speaker for the Brooker MIT Symposium, and wear a video game costume for graduation speech. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> One more. Oh. Despite all of this, oh. well, now sorry. <laughs> Now more than ever, it feels difficult to take risks, especially when it feels like the whole world is watching and there's always something we can lose. Despite this, I'm confident our class is exclusively qualified to overcome any hardship. During our NSOP, our campus flooded from the rain, but rather than hiding away, we brought out a boat and see if thieves are way outside of John Jay. <laughs> we survived. Yeah, we survived a pandemic, stood with our families abroad, and braved events other students may never face in their lives. We even spent a good portion of college without generative AI. Like, yeah, <laughs> isn't it crazy? Like, we started our journey without cloud or perplexity, and now LLMs have dominated our. Oh, sorry.、Uh, GPT says I'm out of free credits, so I guess I have to close <laughs> things off. Yeah, we came here maybe unknowing about what the future would hold, and definitely not knowing what these four years would bring, but we made it. With the invaluable support of our friends and family, after weathering so many tides. We've made it to the crest of our college careers. Look, among us, class of 2025, <laughs> we are seas, and we're going to make waves. All right, clap, clap a little longer so I can put my robe back on. <laughs> Thank you, class. Best class ever in the university. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's enough. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Right. Sorry for the cheesy send-off, but if you wanted a professional speaker, you would have looked in the college. Now, <laughs> now, I'd like to invite Reed Ellison, class of 2008, and president of the Columbia Engineering Alumni Association, to the podium. 告诉大家，我最近发现了新法宝 Royal Face 逆时奇迹系列，它有活肤露、全效精华，还有精华霜。尤其我皮肤比较偏干，所以我非常的注重保湿。
老师做的好，肌肤自然烹饪。平亮肤色，更年轻。抚平皱纹，超有感，而且气色变好，用心保养，每天都更美一点。美吧